Greetings to you, my fellow in withdrawal Aston Villa supporter, as I welcome you to the parlor where the tree is now up and decorated. I know I took a lot of flack about having it up so early last year. In fact, all my decorating is done and I took some heat last year. But this is what's happening right now outside Holy Trinity headquarters. This is happening live right now. Blowing snow. The lights are up. This is when you want your decorations up. And and this is the parlor right here. That window is what you see right behind over here on my jerseys. So I'm feeling festive. I'm in the mood. And Aston Villa has made a minor contribution to the World Cup. Yes, we only have three sort of meaningful contributors to their respective World Cup campaigns. However interesting contributions so far. So I wanted to talk about that. Plus, there have been some other little bits and bobs that we should probably talk about. And besides, where are we at now until Boxing Day? I don't know. It's like 28 days until Aston Villa plays again. So let's pour ourselves a rusty nail. This is equal parts Drambuie and your whiskey or scotch of choice. As we talk about the Aston Villa performers at the World Cup in Qatar. Now that we're into the meat and potatoes, arguably the best time of the greatest show on earth, the World Cup. Isn't it fun to watch the Aston Villa representatives, all of whom are in with a shout right now and contributing to their country, starting with Matty Cash, who some media outlets gave as the mat of the match against Saudi Arabia. Great recognition here to overlap and then play a decent ball in, contributing to the 1-0 goal. And that was the game-winning goal against Mexico. He was stressed. He was put under a lot of pressure. In fact, I almost wonder if the Mexicans were targeting his side of the park a little bit. But they survived. Clean sheet. And for Matt Cash, two clean sheet 90-minute performances. And now he's going to face Emmy Martinez. Never mind his on-field exploits. Surely you've seen this. That advert got me thinking, strangely, because I know it's just one line in a Polish auto insurance commercial, but it's not like Polish is some kind of straightforward language that you just pick up, even if your grandparents spoke it all the time. I mean, how would you function if you went to another country that didn't have English as a first language and you had to pick up enough to get by on? I mean, that thought kind of terrifies me and makes me anxious, to be honest. But there he was. And when we think back to Dean Smith and when he was in charge and when he was really heavily involved in recruitment, what was one of the key components he looked for in the type of human being that came to the club? Well, it was somebody who had a growth mindset, somebody who wanted to improve their careers, take on information, not be happy with where they were at as people or professionals. And now Maddie Cash has an extremely detailed professor of football in Unai Emery, willing to teach him some of the finer points. Do you look at this guy now and the adventure that he's on and the chance that he kind of took by becoming a Polish citizen as a sign that, you know, maybe there is more to come. And maybe this World Cup offers Matt Cash this entirely new experience and sense of confidence, because I could see that happening. Now, maybe I'm biased, but I thought Leander Den Donker was Belgium's best player against a very athletic and capable and dangerous looking Canadian side. And OK, Thibaut Courtois makes an enormous penalty save. And if he doesn't, Canada takes the lead and then can get into their counterattacking style game, which was their bread and butter during qualification. But then Donker covered so much ground in that game on a pretty big stage, by the way. He stood out. Four recoveries, three clearances, two blocks, and two out of two on defensive tackles. But the big stat was 97% in 
in his passing from 75 passes. That is an incredible amount. A lot of poise, a lot of athleticism, a lot of patience shown, and wouldn't you know it, he doesn't start against Morocco and Belgium loses 2-0. Roberto Martinez must start him against a team like Croatia that has that level of experience and guile in the midfield. They're the runners up from 2018. What a big game on Thursday. And I really hope that he gets the tap on the shoulder and that he does good things. And then, of course, there's Emmy Martinez. Oh, Emmy, Emmy, Emmy. I went on Twitter after the Saudi Arabia game and I made the comment that Maybe his starting position could have been a little bit better and perhaps he could have done more with a little bit of detail here or there to prevent those two goals. I never said that the two goals were his fault because the defending leading up to those final phases was, by Argentina standards, quite deplorable. It's almost as if they backed off. It's almost as if they could not allow themselves to believe that Saudi Arabia was capable of scoring. But I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know a whole lot, but I know goalkeeping. Goalkeeping is my jam. And if you were to ask Emmy himself and the Argentine goalkeeper coach, Martin Tocali, could you have done better on both of those goals? They would have both absolutely said yes. And the reason why I love the guy and why we're lucky to have him at Aston Villa is that he is obsessive about not conceding goals. It's not a good game. If he concedes a goal, and it's even worse if they lose the game. And again, we're talking about growth mindset here, a guy who constantly wants to learn. We're going to break down these goals. But isn't it interesting that Emmy admitted that after that game, he sought the help of Argentina's resident sports psychologist. That's how rattled he was about those two goals. Let me ask you this simple question. Would a player who honestly believes it was two perfect strikes that he had absolutely no chance on go and seek the help of a sports psychologist after that game? No way. But does a guy who wants to nip any kind of mental issue in the bud before the next game go and seek the help of a professional? Yes, because Emmy Martinez has a growth mindset like Matty Cash, and he was, of course, brought in during the Dean Smith era. This says a lot about this guy. This is why we should be encouraged, because he has that insatiable desire to be better. Now, looking at the details of those two goals that Saudi Arabia scored, there are similarities to both of them. And if you look at the starting position, this reminds me an awful lot of the Wilf Zaha 1-1 goal at Crystal Palace just after Ollie Watkins had scored. Look at his position in comparison to the near post. This player has no other option but to go far post. And that's why it's weird to me that Martinez doesn't get there. And if we look at it in even slower motion, Martinez could be one step forward and one step to his left away from getting to this. But he only reacts here. It's under him. There's no dive. Again, there's no push off or extension. This is under him and past him. But there is no push off. And that would have been a whole lot easier. In fact, he might have even kicked out his leg and saved this if he had just positioned himself slightly more central to the goal. Yes, it's a perfect strike. But he'll think that he could have done better on it. And if you look at it from this angle, there is an air of good fortune to this because look at the defender's leg. It goes just underneath it. But here you can see how there is no extension whatsoever. It's just a reach. It's a fall. It's a tumble. It's too late. And because this is just inches away, this is why Martinez will wonder, could I have done more? What could I have done differently? And how do I fix it for the next time? On the second goal. Again, you could see how deep he is in his goal, really, when we just move it forward a little bit. There is where his position is uh, in the goal. And from this angle, it looks like he's close to his near post. But from the field angle, it'll be a, a very different look. So I got that part wrong. He wasn't really rooted to his near post, but he's still deep in his goal. Now, the shooter is 17 and a half yards out here and he's on an angle. So this is about 20 yards from goal. There really isn't any other choice for him 
but to go far post. And you'd think that knowing that and that maybe even Martinez showing him far post, he would get a jump when the strike leaves the foot. But even though it goes through legs, look at how long it takes for him to react. He only reacts here. And at this stage, it's not a dive. He's leaning and falling. There's no extension. There's no spring off or push off from his foot. He's kind of flat footed and he only leaves the ground once the ball is kind of behind him. So it's a late reaction. He probably gets the wrong hand technically on the ball. It should be his left hand because he would extend farther. But this one for me, he will say because he got a piece of it that he should have done better. If we look at it from the field level now, this is a, a much better look because you could see what the shooter sees. Even the far post. I mean, there's a defender that could be blocking off here, but there is nothing on for the near post. And that's why I'm surprised that Martinez didn't get a better touch. And here you can see how late he reacts. Look at how late he reacts. Late, late. There's no push off. There's no extension. He's just he's just reaching here. And he actually comes down. You see how he comes? He's gone up and he's gone down by that stage. If his left hand is fully extended and he gets a leap, absolutely he's getting to that and getting more of it. So this is why I'm saying and why he will never say, oh, those were just two really well-placed great strikes. No, he's not going to say that because he was literally inches from preventing both of those goals. Now, Unai Emery was at Arsenal while Emmy Martinez was coming up through the ranks, and there are some pretty dodgy, clickbaity type media outlets suggesting that the two of them had a falling out. Let's hope not. There's been a lot of water under the bridge since that time, but you know that Unai Emery had a detailed book on every single Aston Villa player, including Emmy Martinez, strengths, weaknesses, all of that. And if Martinez was in a really good run of form, do you think he really would have fired big cuts, Neil Cutler? I don't think so. Even if he has worked with Francisco Javier Garcia all the way back to the Arsenal days, you know, he's very familiar with this guy. So I could understand wanting that. But if Emmy Martinez is standing on his head week after week, making great saves and earning clean sheets, firing the goalkeeper coach is a bit risky at that stage. So I think that Unai Emery will demand more out of his number one. And when you consider the poor ball played after 47 seconds at Brighton and the fact that Martinez has probably not stolen a game on his own since I'm thinking the away game at Wolves back in the lockout season, that tells me that there's room for growth here, there's room to be pushed, and there's higher expectations. And you know, a really good World Cup run would be a perfect platform for Big Emmy. Oh my goodness, have you heard the news? Aston Villa has not drawn a Premier League opponent away in the third round of the FA Cup. No, we're getting League Two Stevenage coming to Villa Park for the third round of the FA Cup on the weekend of January 7th. I repeat, this is not a drill. We are not going to Old Trafford for the third round of the FA Cup. And wouldn't it just be so Villa if Unai Emery rotates the squad heavily because of fixture congestion and we get bounced by Stevenage at Villa Park? I shouldn't even be putting that out in the universe, but I'm a Villa fan. I've been conditioned. Also, Aston Villa playing a friendly against Cardiff City, maybe as we speak right now. They're going to play Chelsea in Dubai in this mini training camp on December 11th, uh, a few days before Via Real comes to Villa Park for that friendly against Unai Emery's old team. And around this time, tricky Mickey Beal will be in charge of Rangers. I mean, he's exchanged one Rangers for another. This is absolutely incredible to me. Uh, a lot of questions about loyalty, integrity, ambition. I mean, things are racing through my mind like, what is Steven Gerrard? thinking about all this. He leaves Villa to go to QPR, and now he goes back to Rangers, where they had the success together, but to lead it. And what are QPR fans thinking, or Wolves fans, for that matter? I'm going to be honest with you. 
I do enjoy a good train wreck. So long as it's not a train that I'm actually on. But this ain't our train anymore. So wreck away. It's fun to watch. And maybe Big Tim will come back from Loftus Road too. Hey, thanks for the messages during Canada's performances at the World Cup, by the way. I appreciated getting those. And yes, at times they looked good, but that was pretty frustrating to see my country get bounced out the second behind Qatar to leave the competition officially. And really, those two games beautifully exemplified the issues we have within our country and its footballing culture. I don't think enough people in this country who are key people love the game enough. I, mean, I think it's a problem at every level, the federation, the league level, the professional clubs, their jobs, their opportunities, but people don't love it. They don't love it enough to look around the rest of the world and research, study, and understand what good looks like. Here, we think we're pretty good. And that's hubris. That is vanity. That is ego. And that was on display for these two games. Alfonso Davies doesn't take the penalties at Bayern Munich, but in that moment, he decided he was going to be the star because he kind of is the star. He's a wonderful player and a wonderful story and a great guy. But he decided to take the responsibility there where Jonathan David does take the penalties for his club. And you could see as he was standing and waiting to take that kick, he did not have the experience in that moment. Against Croatia, he decided, I'm going to play street football and basically be a number 10 and roam all over the place. And all of his teammates didn't know what he was going to do half the time. The reason they qualified for the World Cup was because they were deeply committed to what they called the brotherhood. They knew their roles and they stayed in those lanes and they finished a top CONCACAF because of it. Then it comes to this tournament and for whatever reason, everything changes. And I think that's partially down to coaching. The coach has to rein that in. And speaking of the coach, John Herdman, what was he thinking? First of all, having one of those dumb made for TV huddles. I hate those. We should be thankful that Unai Emery shakes hands and he's up the tunnel in a flash almost before the game is over. I appreciate that. Take the points, get out. Don't do a huddle and do this televangelist routine, which is what I think John Herdman is. I think he's 95% sales, 5% football, and he's very good at sales. But he gave Croatia the perfect distraction from the heat the coach was under after the opening round draw against Morocco. And he had a chance to rectify that in the pre-match build-up press conference to Croatia, but he didn't back down. That is hubris and ego and vanity. And it came back to bite Canada in the ass. Now, we're hosting the World Cup in four years, and we have to learn. We have to learn how to be humble, and we have to learn to find out what good looks like, because hosting is a completely different ball of wax. It's a huge opportunity. And I'm worried, unless we recognize this issue of humility, we're going to waste that opportunity. What do you think about this beauty, by the way? Another from the training collection. I just love the details on, on all this kit. And I think I might have a bit of a problem because I just went and ordered this on Cyber Monday because I want to have a Christmassy sweater to wear to the office Christmas party and tick off all the United fans in my building. So... If you want to buy anything Aston Villa related, you know the sales are going to continue. I've put a link in the description. Use that link. You'll be supporting the show. And until next time, which is I don't really know when, I'm just going to tell you, be festive. Enjoy the snow like we're having outside. Enjoy the World Cup and let's go. Those Villa players involved. And of course, and as always, up the mighty Villa. <laughs>